What's up everybody, Jared here with CarBuzz.com and today I am bringing you a review of something very different from what I normally drive. Yes, it does have a three-pointed star there at the front, but it is not a luxury sedan or a sports car, no. It is the new 2024 Mercedes E Sprinter. This is an all new electric version of Mercedes popular Sprinter van and today I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about it. So let's start off with an exterior walk around of the E Sprinter. This white one that we're looking at is going to be a very base model to show you what comes on the e-sprinter as standard, but there are a ton of different things that you can option. You can equip this however your business really needs it, so you can make it nicer, you can keep it basic, you can do whatever you want. Now the e-sprinter is only available in one configuration. It's going to be this cargo van, so you're not going to have any windows on the side. You have to get the high roof, and you have to get the 170 inch wheelbase, which is the big boy. They are not doing a small, more packed version of this. They're not doing a passenger version. If you need something like a hotel shuttle or an airport uh, shuttle carrier, something like that, you're going to have to use a retrofitter to put something on the back of this configuration. As of right now, Mercedes is only selling this as a big cargo van. Now here at the front, we've got a plastic front end. This is a van after all. I mentioned we have the giant Mercedes three-pointed star here. This is actually where your charging port is going to live. You've got your DC CCS uh, cord right here. We'll talk a little bit about what we can do with that just a little bit later on in the video. This one is finished in a basic white, but Mercedes actually has some crazy cool colors available for this van. You can get like a teal, a yellow, a red, a blue, ton of really cool options here. As standard, you're gonna be getting these 16 inch steel wheels, but I actually have one over here to show you. Those are the optional 16 inch alloy wheels. They're about $1,000 extra if you want an alloy wheel, but steel is gonna be what comes with it as standard. You have a little badge here on the back that says E electric, where the E is actually blue and the rest of it is in silver. And then here at the back, we've got this little step right here. That is optional, they don't all have that. And this one does not have the glass there at the back, it just has panels. But as you can see from this gray one over here, you can get glass back there if you want. So now let's go ahead and check out the interior of the E Sprinter. This one is actually a lot nicer. This one has the optional LEDs. You can see that one has like the regular halogen. So a lot more of a more premium look here on this one if you go ahead and go for the LEDs. And we're gonna see some nice stuff on the inside as well. So this one, actually has an upgraded cloth seat that has this nice pattern on it. These seats are all also heated as well. You can get power seats. This one actually has the power seat option. Manual is what comes as standard. So this is the nicer cloth seat. I think it only adds about $67 to the price, which is really not that bad. And it's a really nice cloth. You can also get leatherette seats for the same price. They're about $67. They're going to have these nice armrests. That passenger seat is actually an optional extra. We'll go tour that white one as well in this video and show you what a more basic version of the e-sprinter is going to look like. But this one is pretty nice on the inside. We've got a steering wheel that really would not look out of place in a normal Mercedes-Benz passenger car. We even have the same uh, gloss black touch capacitive controls for things like the volume and the cruise control. Not a big fan of those on the, on the new Mercedes models, if I'm being honest, but they do the job just fine. We actually have some really kind of quaint analog gauges here. We've got our sort of economy boost charge gauge because this is electric, we don't need a tachometer. We've got our speed over here. And then we can actually do quite a bit with this little screen here in the center. You can control it using these little uh, haptic feedback buttons here. Uh, this vehicle isn't started up all the way, so I can't really show you, but you can put things like your audio, your map information, things like that. Now the regular Sprinter is going to have a much smaller screen here, but this is the optional 10.25 inch touchscreen. It's powered by MBUX, the same stuff that you would get in a Mercedes passenger car, which is pretty nice. So you do have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, all of that good stuff. It's actually a really good system for you know a van application. We also have the optional automatic climate control. That is an option as well. 
we've got a ton of cup holders here. We've got one, two, three, four down here. And then we have two up here on the dash, two more over there. We also have a little storage area here. We can go ahead and open this up. This is actually the bigger version. You can get a wireless charging pad in here. And you also have your USB-C ports, three of them, plus a uh, 110 outlet. So lots of different ways to charge up your device. Now we do have the partition here. This is just what you get as standard. We do have some little hooks on it. So it is very pretty much impossible to see out of the back of this van, but you do actually get a digital rear view mirror. If I go ahead and fire this all the way up, Sorry, I can't power this all the way up, but it's the same as, we, as we've seen on a lot of Toyotas and other things. So this becomes a camera instead of a regular mirror and you can see out of the back quite easily. This particular one has the optional power door. So if I click this button right here, it's gonna open up our sliding door, which is only over here on the passenger side. You do not get a door over there on the driver's side. So I do like the optional power door, could come in handy, makes it a little bit easier to get in and out of here. This one has something that you won't get on your e-sprinter, which is these little glass cutouts. That's to show you where the batteries and electric motors are, but you can do pretty much anything you want with this space. You can get shelving, you can leave it open. You can do pretty much anything you want back here. You do get a really nice amount of space, 488 cubic feet total and you can load this thing up with a gross vehicle weight of just over 9300 pounds so you can close the door with this little button right here and it will do so automatically but now i'm going to come over here and show you what the more basic version of the e-sprinter is going to look like now this is not all the way base it does still have the mbux infotainment system there but this is what it's going to look like as standard seating wise you get a more basic cloth that doesn't have the pattern on it it still actually feels just fine but here on the passenger side you're going to have this little jump seat so you have this headrest up here you have this base unit right here it's actually a little bit difficult to show with one hand but you just push this red button and then this bottom portion folds out and now you have a temporary passenger seat right here this is useful for somebody who's like delivering mail or packages or whatever else with this van you probably don't need the passenger seat very often so it can just go out of the way and you can have more storage here you also get this nice little door this nice little sliding door that can get you between the storage area back here and the driver portion. So you don't even necessarily have to open this big door. You can just open up the partition, hop between here and the driver's seat. And as you can see, this one doesn't have the glass in the back, but we do have the rear doors as well. These are the side opening doors that come as standard. This one opens up first, and then you get a little handle to open up this one. And now you can access your cargo area from the back. All right, so let's get behind the wheel of the Mercedes E Sprinter. This is actually the first time I've driven an electric van like this. There's really only one other option in the United States, which is the Ford E Transit. Um, and these are a little bit different uh, in how they go about being an electric van. So let's talk about the Mercedes here. We've got a single configuration. There's not like a, a bunch of different setups here. We've got a single electric motor at the back, rear wheel drive only. You cannot get all wheel drive. The motor itself is tiny. It only weighs about 286 pounds and you can actually get it with two different levels of output. Uh, I had to convert these from kilowatts that Mercedes had them in, but you can either get 134 horsepower or the one we're driving, which has 201 horsepower. No matter which output you get, you're gonna get 295 pound-feet of torque. And I asked Mercedes why offer two power outputs and <laughs> They actually gave me kind of a funny uh, explanation for that. They said, well, maybe, you know, you have a fleet manager that's buying all these vans and they don't trust their drivers that much. They don't want to give them the extra power, you know, to do silly, silly things like this, like floor it. Okay, not so fast, even with the 201 horsepower, but I will say that I drove this on the highway and compared to like the only other comparable thing I've driven is like, you know, like a Chevy Express van or like a Ford Transit with the gas guzzling V8 motor. Like they are so loud and so heavy. And when you put your foot down, you just get rah, noise, tons, you know, it just feels loud and slow in this. It's instant. It's effortless. 
It's quiet in here. The only thing you really get is a little bit of wind noise. It feels very serene in here. That is something you do not get in a gas van. We do have some drive modes that I can actually play around with. So comfort is actually gonna be your base. That's like kind of your power mode. You have eco mode and then you have maximum range mode. So basically when you put it in maximum range mode, the more you put down your foot on the throttle, it's not gonna accelerate quite as much. You can feel a pretty significant difference. And Mercedes does say that these modes are are going to have a pretty uh, decent impact on your range here. So I'm going to go ahead and cycle through the different modes here. And you might even see that your range in the little gauge cluster screen is going to change a bit as you change the modes. Speaking of the range, we've got a pretty large battery in here. It's a 113 kilowatt hour pack. I mean, that's big for something like a Tesla Model X. It's not necessarily that big for a van, but the Ford E-Transit has a much smaller battery. I think it's about 60 68 kilowatt hours. So the range on this Mercedes is actually going to be much higher than in the Ford. So these are WLTP numbers, but I went ahead and did the conversion. Uh, you can kind of get a rough estimate of what the EPA is going to be. Unfortunately, I don't have the exact numbers as of this recording, but you should get about 243 miles on a charge, which is significantly longer than what you're going to get in Ford's electric van, which only goes about 125 miles on a charge. And Mercedes says that if you're really only doing city you're not doing any highway driving which is potentially possible if you're on like a delivery route in a van like this you might get close to or even over 290 miles on a charge which is pretty good we also have some regen modes that you can play around with on the steering wheel here they're a little confusing there's like a d minus which is going to be the heaviest regen mode there's like a normal mode there's an auto mode where it'll kind of gauge whether or not somebody's in front of you and traffic lights and stuff like that i haven't had a ton of time to sample them the d minus mode mode is pretty nice and even and easy to get used to. It is not a full one pedal driving mode, so you are going to still need to rely on the brake pedal to bring yourself to a full stop. But if you are just kind of crawling in traffic or stop and go, that's not quite all the way at a stop, you could potentially maybe do it with one pedal. And in terms of capability, Mercedes does offer Sprinter vans with 3,500 and 4,500 capability um, in terms of their payload capacity. The E Sprinter is only available in a 2,500 capacity. So you're gonna get just over 2,600 pounds of payload capacity. I believe the Ford is a little bit higher on that. The Ford also has a lot more power. It's like 260 horsepower and like over 300 pound feet of torque. So it is faster than this, but it, remember it doesn't get the range that this Mercedes does. And honestly, for a van, I think that the range might be a little bit more important than the power output. The thing is though, when you do have a bigger battery like this, this is like almost twice the size of the battery in the Ford, uh, charging is going to potentially be an issue depending on where you are charging it. The regular e Sprinter, the base model is gonna charge at 50 kilowatts, but for a little bit extra, you can pay to have it charge at 115 kilowatts. If you go ahead and do that, you'll get from 10 to 80% charge in about 40 minutes. Or if you plug it in on a level two outlet, you can get about 9.6 kilowatts. So um, I'm not sure the quoted time on charging that, but again, it really just depends on what your business case for this is. I think if you're doing a route in the day, as long as it's under about 250 to 270 miles, you bring it back to the warehouse or wherever it lives most of the time, you plug it in on a level two and it's probably gonna be good to go the next day and that's going to be fine for most use cases. And before we wrap up and talk about pricing and all of that good stuff, I just want to say that if you drive a van for work and you're tired of just the loud, monotonous, you know, noise of the engine and all of the fuel that you have to purchase on a yearly basis and all of the maintenance that you have to do on all the belts and transmission and all of that. I think this really simplifies it and you might not care about your uh, your workers emotional well-being, but driving this, I can tell you that your employees are going to be so much happier. This is so much more peaceful, it's so much more relaxing and serene. The acceleration is smoother. You don't have to worry about getting up to speed. You just put your foot down and it does everything really easily and nicely for you. It's a really nice driving experience. And I never thought that I'd be able to say that about something like a cargo van like this. Is it worth the additional money over a normal Sprinter? Well, that I'm not so sure about. Let's hop out and we'll talk about pricing. <laughs> 
So that sums up our time with the 2024 Mercedes E Sprinter. Let's go ahead and talk about pricing. It starts at $71,866. That is quite expensive for one of these vans. Uh, to put it into perspective for you, if you got a 170 inch wheelbase high roof cargo van with the diesel engine, that's gonna start at just under $59,000. So it is quite a price jump to get up to the electric one. But if you're doing a lot of miles on these, and you're owning it for a really long time, the lower maintenance costs of the electric motor and the lower running costs might pay for itself over time. You're just gonna have to do the math for your business. Now, all of these are the 2500 class, as I mentioned, that high output motor, if you want more power, that's about $3,400. And then there's a ton of other uh, additional things. The uh, faster 100 kilowatt, uh, 150 kilowatt DC charging is about $593. Honestly, a lot of the options are not that expensive. The leather seats are only like $67. The power door isn't that expensive. So there is a lot that you can add to this for not a ton of money. And Mercedes will even offer a really good lease deal, uh, $6,300 down for 36 months. And your payment will be just under $1,000, which is really not all that bad. So I'm really curious to hear what your thoughts are. Are you excited to see other electric vans from Mercedes? I personally am really excited to see that luxury passenger van that's a little bit smaller. I really want something like Metris minivan sized for the US because I just think that would be really cool. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. I'll see you next time.